back in this bitch, uh Know we full attack in this shit, uh You know the full Mac came equipped, uh So promise you don't want no Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 More Than 92 podcast where we always keep it 100 with you. We are your host, Harrison. Naji. Today, we are joined by a very, 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 very funny comedian from the Ville. That's where I met him at the Josh and Friends podcast. It's sounding very, very familiar, but I promise you, a lot of great things happen that night. We got the very, very, very funny comedian Mike Drew with us today. How are you today? Man, what up, though, man? I'm excellent, man. Excellent. Blessed. Yeah. Highly favored. Appreciate you coming on with us today. Glad to have you on now. Uh, blessed to have you on. You're a very, very funny comedian. Like I said, I seen you back in January when I was in Nashville at the Josh and Friends show. And I promise you, it was getting very, very stale from an old girl from Liverpool, wherever she was at, talking about she finally met her man to some other dude. It was, it was only like two funny people. It was a guy with the sweater on, and it was you josh and it was i think that was about it and it was it was crickets you know but uh yours was funny just you know it was it was funny just because well you know black black people come on so i knew you know you you need to go one or two ways and then if you're gonna come up there and be hannibal i was probably gonna <laughs> tune out you came and you gave uh that that deaf comedy jam feel so I knew yeah. with the audience of course they probably wouldn't get it but you know you was gonna have my black ass up there standing up like you know, if Martin or somebody came up there, Bernie Mac came up in there and said, "I ain't scared of you, motherfucker." So you know, yeah, yeah, um, I appreciated just the presence. But um, go ahead and tell everybody a little bit about yourself. I'm a fucking around doing more talking than you. Introduce yourself to the people. Shit, don't trip. Like he said, I'm the motherfucker that came to Zanies and shook it whole one time. Now I don't know what's which. I've been there a couple of times. I don't know what show you seen. Did I have on all black? You had on the gray T-shirt, the blue jeans. You had a beer in your hand, and you was talking about oh, the that white was, girl. That was recent. Yeah, that was recent. Yeah, most you, recent. Saw, you saw the white girl, and you thought she had hips on her until she stood up and she had flat back. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thick, <coughs> and then, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, man. So I'm Mike Drew, Nashville, a Nashville comedian. Uh, I've been doing this thing about four years, this September be four years, uh, I've been traveling. I've been, you know, uh, moving real fast with this game, you know, learning fast, too, though, now, you know, but uh, it's been moving and pushing fast. And I'm just a regular old dude. I'm a lot older than some of the comics, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like Josh, I got kids Josh age, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but but I still seem to seem to, to be able to get on the level with them guys still. You, know. you would never be able to tell that you were four years in because you got a good stage presence for somebody. And four years isn't that long for people don't really understand. Like, you know, you have a good set to you. You don't. A lot of people. I've been to enough shows to know that, you know, you got to have a routine. And, you know, comedy ain't like music. You know, you can recycle a song over and over again, but you don't want to recycle a joke. And, you know, when you're going up on these different stages, you want fresh material so you know yeah. um you know what what gives you that that ease into it for somebody that's still relatively young you you kind of you know a toddler well yeah young in the game you mean right yeah young in the I'm game yeah okay. yeah not yeah, not young in life you know you, you, up there, you know you up there uh social security age but young in the game yeah i got an app card but uh okay but but for me i think what gives me the ease is when I do the comedy, I'm doing it the way I do it from when I was in high school, junior high, on the block, anywhere I was at. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I got some of that deaf jam, that deaf comedy jam influence also. You know what I'm saying? I just think I got something in common with them. I don't think it's really much of an influence. I just think that's my era. And that's I'm I'm those kind of guys, you know, with the, with different generations, people change. You know, you know what I'm saying? In the twenties, all black people wore suits, top hats and shit like that. Now we sagging and we wearing ball caps backwards. You see what I'm saying? So I'm I even even though uh I'm young in the game, I brought that element with me all my life and it's real, it's believable. Even if I don't say jokes that's funny, the things I do still make it funny because i'm an older dude doing it you uh 
So, like, since you've been in the game, have you ever had a time where maybe you just had a bad night or you just didn't get the the kind of crowd that you was looking for? Have you ever had a situation where you felt like maybe this ain't for me? Like, what pushed you through that to go to the, you know, to keep going? Or have you been booed yet? I ain't been booed yet. Uh, I ain't had a that ain't for me situation yet because when I got into it, everything everything moved so fast. The the advantage I had over just being a new comic was like he was saying you want to hear fresh stuff all the time. I could always freestyle pretty good. Oh, so I can I you know once I understood how to do stage presence and microphone etiquette and all that type of stuff, I just all I did was just put my mind to being in the back of that school bus, frying my homeboys. We going back and forth and uh, really trying to be the funniest, just like how Kobe got that mindset. When you piss him off, he go in for 60. Yeah. Shit, when we was joking, jokes were serious. You yeah. couldn't you couldn't get mad. You was a weak one. You were weak when you did that. You couldn't get mad. And then you just had to be able to just go all night. So when just like rappers, when they freestyling all night, oh man, we'll walk, just walk the neighborhood, just frying each other, crying. Good old, good old laughs. You know what I'm saying? So I came from that era. So when them young dudes stand up try to do all this structure shit, uh and they go to mic uh, to the open mics. They practicing. I go up there and just start doing my thing. Whether it's a story, I'm frying somebody. Record it. Go home. Pick out what I like. Go to a a, a, a low level show. Practice it there. Then take it to a big show. So that, so like you said, you said that you ain't really you know you grew up on like deaf comedy and all that. So you don't have no mentors or nobody in the game. You 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 didn't really know no comedians that were just like, hey, uh, let me talk to you. Let me show you some little things. You kind of just did off of just your own life and what you already been doing. Mm hmm. Uh, it's do y'all know Sibo, the comedian? I looked up to him back in the day because he was like, uh, we from the same neighborhood, but he got a little couple of years over on me. And I used to watch how he would have people scared. He not only would he have people scared to joke, but he had them scared to talk. And I and he had like he would like some people they just gangster, and you know they got a gun on them or they tied in with these gangs or something like that. He wasn't none of that. He was just like his weapon was his mouth. And I was one. You know I ain't never want no smoke with him in my little in my little group because uh, we was in junior high. We had the same bus stop. So he frying people. I was him in my little group, but I wouldn't dare challenge him. So when I seen he was doing it for real, I, I was just always scared to do it until I got into my situation. But that's who I looked up to. And Flash Flood is one of the dudes, if you want to say mentor, kind of sh showed me the ropes, how to do it in the business way, like getting mm -hmm. booked, how to, how to ask for money, what not to go for and shit like that. Anybody in the industry that you kind of look up to, like, say, I want to be like an in industry uh, professionally that's already like kind of probably made it, or like, you know, Cat Williams, Bernie Mac, Eddie Murphy. Lovell, Crawford, Eddie Murphy? Okay. Eddie Murphy, yes. Anybody Eddie you model Murphy. your style after? You think so? No, but I get compared to Mike Epps a lot. Okay. Just because he seemed like, cause he seemed like he freestyle a lot of his stuff too. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Um, he's silly too. He's silly too. You know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. take Cat Williams, he talking about the war and the presidents, and he say silly shit too. But he put real political, him, Dave, shit like that. But you take a motherfucker like D, D Ray, uh, D Ray Davis, yeah, like mm -hmm. Ray Davis, him and Cat, uh, uh, him and Mike Epps, they more loose on stage. They they mm -hmm. like their uncle at the party. Yeah. Do you feel like you more of a uh, situational storyteller or do you feel like, you know, you got the like, who do you feel like, you know, which party, which party you feel like where you at? Uh, I'm not a, a a situational storyteller, but I do bring up situations and make comparisons. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, for instance, some guys, be they're going to a story. See, stories to me, are, to me, is time fillers. Because if I finish do 45 minutes, of course I got to burn them minutes. So I can't come slapping in like this the whole time. Unless I got that kind of material. But I ain't old enough in the game yet to have 45 minutes of this right there. You see what I'm saying? I start off that way. Then I ease into fucking with the crowd. Then I ease back into uh, fucking with the crowd and doing that. And then I slow our way down and bust a story. You know what I'm saying? Something stupid that I thought of and try to get them on that level. But 
coming straight out with stories back to back to back like Dave and how Cosby do. No, nah, that ain't me. I'm I'm more of a um uh I kind of do the fast paced type of shit. Gotcha. You saw like uh, DC Young Fly, Carlos Miller, that kind of shit like that. That's where the professionalism come in at. That's where I learned from my homie Flash Flood. You just gotta push it. Just like doing your songs. Uh 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 Yo Gotti gonna do his song tonight and then he gonna uh in the morning when he go over wherever he's going and he gonna do that song and he gonna do that song, he gonna do that song, he gonna do that song. Uh I don't like to be that way with comedy, but I understand it, so I will do it. If uh, just last night I was at a show, and day before, and the night before that, I was at a show. Then the night before that, I seen like ten people that from that show came to the show last night, and they gonna hear the same shit. You know what I'm saying? That's why I talk on my like, hey, I seen about 10, 15 people that was from the show last night. So y'all finna hear the same shit. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but a lot of times I like to not go scripted. That's how I started. And um, but you know, the older comics used to get on me like where well, they ain't really get on me, they would just be like, Well, that's all he got, one trick pony, you know what I'm saying? Because I could freestyle really well, you know what I'm saying? But they they was like, You can't do that if you go on tour, if you someone pick you up and you gotta open for them, they gotta know you got this shit working and it's gonna fly, you know what I'm saying? They can't be on the edge and one if you're gonna go one way, and then last night you went this way, you see what I'm saying? So I understood that. So, but my my biggest the, the thing that works for me the most that brings me my magic is when I bring the crowd in. You so since you have a, since you have a naturally charismatic or a natural uh, boisterous personality, you ever thought about working with a writer for somebody who maybe possibly has can probably bring out the best to you? So that way, because you you are funny, you're hilarious. Have you ever thought about probably getting somebody that could curtail of uh, to where you are maybe doing a set? to where like when you do get to that touring set to where it's like you still are kind of freestyling to a way but get into the same kind of in the same box to where it's like you know that like i said they're not worried about you kind of which way you're going left today you're going right today because like i said that like when you're in the smaller when you've kind of first starting off like i said that works i've seen like uh ha ha davis um yeah. dc Fly. when i listen to these interviews you know um everybody said like the chitlin circuit that's when yep. you go or even when you chris rock and everybody starting back off you know you test jokes early on but yeah every when you get into it you're repeating the same jokes over and over and over again that's why like if you see somebody live i ain't got to see the special if it's the same tour because they said the same joke you know yeah. so do you, do you see probably <coughs> you probably getting or having a homeboy or somebody that kind of know you and y'all probably jotting down maybe like a script or an outline to kind of get like the bases and stuff like that you ever see that coming up in maybe year six drew yeah well um if i get somebody right for me they got to be somebody close to me to where we on the level where they understand how i operate mm -hmm. they got to understand how i operate you know what i'm saying yeah. And, uh as far as writing, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real with you, bro. You know what I'm saying? I ain't lost yet when it came to the freestyle yet. You know what I'm saying? So the way I do it, so I'm, let me make sure you, you understand that I do have a set up to 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I headline now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like in a situation with Zane, is you know I'm on that show with Josh. That's Josh's show. So he's ultimately the, the 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 star or the front man you know what i'm saying but on my outside bookings i do a lot of uh headlining you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so i do have when uh um a lot of time when they call for me they ask for me not to do jokes they they because i've been in so many places over and over and over they just want to have man get this shit crunk let's have some fun you know what i'm saying yeah so even though i try to steer from it they still ask for it you know what i mean yeah. no kathy griffin Griffin say something last week. Um, she was just like, it, it's in regards to like, you know, comedians feeling safe. But somebody was saying, um, are comedians really needed nowadays? Because she, her, the tweet was like, uh, I get a million retweets off of my tweets uh, daily, you know. So do our comedians really need it off their job? And I said that to say, people really don't take how hard your job is to go up on stage and explain like what all goes into it you know uh being a a, a comedian actually have some time you got to really start fucking up a lot you got to see what work what don't work add on to it 
take some shit out. They, they call that cutting the fat. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, to you also got it's gonna take some bravery to get up to on that stage, man. You gotta have microphone etiquettes. Uh, uh, you gotta understand where you um. Just like let me make a reference, like if you're a cornerback in the in the football game, you gotta understand where your area you covering. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people you know, don't engage into use the stage. They stand there, and that's not bad. It's like you know, what I'm saying Cosby sat down. But if you're going to move around, you got to make sure you get the left side just as much attention as you do the right side. You know, I used to watch this this uh, show on YouTube. This guy called himself the joke doctor. And and I just learned a lot from him. He would just say the stuff that and I and I, I looked at it and thought about what applies to me and what I want to do. And I just used that as far as uh, like if he might say uh, this, is how you hold the mic. Most people hold the mic on their chin or on their lip and shit like that, or they hold it in their fist like that. So I said, okay, boom. I see rappers doing that shit all the time. So let me, let me, let me, let me try it. I go do it. It worked out good. Boom. I learned something. I apply it. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be open to constructive criticism. You got to know, and you just got to really have fun, man. You can't take it too personal. If people ain't laughing, it's not always bad. Sometimes they just listening. Some people just like looking at you. Just trapped in the story, you know what I'm saying? Do you so when you get off stage, do you have like a maybe like a journal or a sketchbook or something that you go back to? Cause I know I know a lot of uh like a lot of people there just be like, okay, shit, like for some reason this didn't hit because I say like prime example, I went to go see Dave Chappelle and like he did a few jokes. And they was kind of funny. But then when I seen the Netflix series, he did the same joke, but he kind of like altered it. And then when he altered the same joke, it was like, damn, that shit was totally different. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, do, do you ever go back or do you even do you pay attention and be like, OK, I said this. It didn't really hit like I wanted. OK, dude, I'm going to go back and I'm going to change this up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometime I might have to do a move or something like uh, say like we talking about a karate chop and then I half ass did the chop. And in my mind, I'd be like, man, I got to swing full swing with that bitch. Really put it in there. I, I note that, you know what I'm saying? I don't write down notes. Only time I write down notes is if I just shit run in my head because we get a lot of shit in our head and we just can't remember. It'd be cold ass shit, but you be drinking and people talking to you and you just forget it. But uh, <clears throat> what I do is I, I go back and watch the tape. I watch me as a, as, a, as a person in the audience and I study just like how the greats do in basketball. I always make sports analogies, man. Cause they always work good with the comics because it's almost the same thing other than the physical part the mental of it's the same and uh <clears throat> i watch the tape and i look at how i'm looking make sure i'm standing up straight you know it's, it's a lot you know for me anyway that's what i do a lot of niggas they don't care they slouching and shit. uh they walking out stooping and shit. i make sure i stand up straight you know what i'm saying make sure i got a good posture that i ain't looking goofy people you know sometimes that energy come out and people take you differently you see what i'm saying i come out with confidence i don't give a fuck i always say in my mind some people pray you know they be praying and doing that when they get a touchdown and shit before i go on stage man i make i try to make sure i'm somewhere if i'm somewhere i can hit the blunt right before i go out there i hit that bitch one time hit the last drink and i say i say to myself fuck them if it's funny to you it's funny everybody ain't gonna like you bro and then once I get that out the way, baby jitters come out to I say, what's up, y'all? How y'all feeling? And, and once I see they laugh, or somebody go before me and they laughing at somebody that's less funnier than me, I'm like, oh, yeah, we finna slap this hoe because they less funny. I know I'm going to make this shit right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or if, somebody, if I'm in front of a big headliner, it's pressure trying to make sure I got all the right jokes. Now, when you say take notes, I might alter my structure of jokes. I might say I'm going to use joke three and put it first and joke nine second joke eight third like that you feel me mm -hmm. but but a lot of times like when you was talking about dave Chappelle, when he when when you say you heard it one way and then the next time you heard it another way sometimes the environment makes us go a different route with the joke or he might have looked at it and said hey it's gonna hit better if i say it this way or do it this way that yeah. happens all. My gal get on me about that. You ain't said the same. I mean, shut your ass up. They ain't gonna receive it. This a white crowd versus a black crowd. I gotta deliver it a little different. You know what I'm saying? 
can feel like, okay, I'm funny, but it's some people that you get around and you just be like, man, I am funny. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm hitting. It's funny. So I always wonder, like, comedians, do they ever bring them people to their stage to, you know what I'm saying, kind of amplify them? You know what To the show you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what? Uh, I would do it if I if I was high, in a high enough position to do it to where I can, because something like that, I had to pay pay make sure they're in there. You know what I'm saying? I can I just make them spend their money. You know. So, but yeah, man, I I got I done had people that follow me to my shows. <clears throat> it's this one lady, man. She's been at least ten of my shows in a row this year. You know what I'm saying? And uh. Shit, she be about ready to piss on herself. I always try to make sure I can get up front because it helps energize. You know, if she, if I can feed off her, you know, because laughter is contagious, like yawning. When I get bigger, though, when I can afford it, I probably would. What's yeah. the biggest crowd you done uh, worked uh, been in front like of? How many yeah, performed in front of. Uh, probably. Maybe two hundred. Okay, that was this Some year. Or... Bigger than Zanies. I did. I did. Uh, I did. I, I did. A, I hosted a show with Drew Hill and them. They had a fat ass crowd. It was. Oh, okay. uh, oh that shit. It was probably like 200, 300, something like that. I would have been doing that. Uh, the whole time you would open it for the. They be, I've noticed a lot of comedians do that. Like they have a. Uh, I never like. I mean, not comedians. Uh, musicians do that. Like uh, I think uh, Drewski opened up for J Cole. I, I never knew that. I, I didn't know if that's like a, I guess it like pick up the audience. I guess if they sitting there, if comedians open up for like R and B people or whatever, I, I never got the philosophy. But it, it, it I, it's cool philosophy. I, I mean, wake your ass up, laughter, and then your musician come out. I think they did the same thing for Chris Brown. But for the state of comedy and stuff, uh, what do you feel like? Yeah, is it is it fun to do comedy right now? Is it fun to be a comedian? For me, it is. It's fun as a motherfucker. You know. Shit, uh, I weigh out all the shit I do as far as work and stuff. And I say, man, because, you know, they say if you do something you like, it's not really work. I cut hair. I've been cutting hair since I was, uh, I've been fucking with the clip since I was 12. So I like it. It's fun. It's rewarding. I like looking at it. It's rewarding to me. You know what I'm saying? I get joy from it. It pays pretty good. <clears throat> but the comedy different. Shit, I can get no, I can get $10 for and and be coming off sweating but when people are like man you hey bro that's hey man you had my ribs hurting or somebody wiping their face man can we take a picture it's not like for the fame but it just feel good because it's like man they felt the nigga it was worth it when you do a rap song you want motherfuckers be saying your lyric because they feeling the time you write it and shit and I don't feel like they need to feel like it because I wrote it. It's just like, man, we had a good time. I did a good job. I did what I came to do. We laughed. We kicked it. Joking and laughing is fun and kicking it for me. You feel me? So if I got 200 people kicking it off of me, we kicking it. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about that's what comedy is for me is kicking it. A lot of people just do it like it's a like they're in a play or something. It's a, you okay? How you, how you guys doing? It's almost like a lecture. Man, we when I do, man, I'm the, I think I'm the blackest comic in Nashville right now. I, I old, definitely know I'm the hoodies. You know, I came out on '90s rolling the blunt, nigga. You, you the, fuck? the whole nigga up there. That, 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 was, that was the response you was looking for. You was the whole nigga up there. I don't know if you was you was trying to find your way to say it. Yeah, I'm saying, but that's but that's a vibe though. Like I said, I told you, like that's you want relatability. You know what I'm saying, and yeah, that's really, yeah. you know, the the that's what you want when you see somebody that look like you that been through some what you've been through. Like we two different eras, but it's still some type of relatability. Do you feel like what you being um kind of well still going through like you know the rise? You get the freedom to kind of say what you want to. You don't have to uh tailor your routine a little bit right now. You know you don't have to censor yourself a little bit. I understand what you mean. I understand what you mean. He trying to say I ain't big yet nicely. I ain't nobody yet, but I get what you're saying though. No, nah, I ain't in that lane yet, and I'm gonna stay in my lane. I'm a God is telling me to do it the way you do it. You know what I'm saying? What my formula that I got? Just you know, they try to stop a motherfucker from crossing niggas over in the motherfucking NBA. They try to stop Michael Vick from running out the pocket. You know what I'm saying? That's how he do it though. And that's what made him Mike Vick, and that's why his jersey sell like they sell, and that's why his numbers was like they was. You feel me? So this is how I do it. I'm gonna come out, 
and I'm a fast break it every time, you know, and I just need players around me that can can do that. If if it's a show that needs me to do something different, if everything match up like how much it's paying and everything is just good, then yeah, I'll, I'll be in. But like if it's if it's a church that called me, I ain't gonna I'm gonna be a nigga in there, but I'm gonna be a nigga that's trying to get saved. I ain't finna act like I'm an angel. I'm gonna be that nigga that I remember when I used to go to church and what I used to do at church. Freaking and fingering in church and shit at the basement, nigga. Still in the cakes out the, you know, when they used to sell the cake, the bake sale and shit. Nigga, mm-hmm. me and my cousin used to fade them cakes up in there. All that stuff. I'm gonna let them, you know. You think it's safe for y'all right now? You worried about a nigga run up on on y'all right now? Safe on, on y'all? Like comedians. I mean, you still I don't know what them. How safe them niggas is. Yeah. Uh, all I all I'ma do is what I know to do. You know what I'm saying? If they run up, a nigga like me gonna make a choice in my head right then and there. I'm I'm gonna act on my instincts. I'm always up there on that type of shit. That's how I roll. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't up there like looking to fight a nigga or nothing, but mm-hmm. I just think a nigga gotta understand nigga can see when a motherfucker see you and you being really you, my nigga. If you walk into a prison, you feel me? I don't give a fuck how you twist your face up, my nigga. Nigga gonna them hound dogs gonna sniff that shit out. You feel me? <laughs> how, I don't give a damn how how swole you. Oh, none of that shit. It gonna be through the eyes. It's gonna be a nigga heart. It's gonna be and you can hide it for a little bit. Something gonna happen and bring that real you out of it. You feel me? So I already know that. So I just be me. I tell I don't want no problem. I, don't, I ain't no fighting ass nigga, but I will hit the nigga if he come up there acting like he finna hurt me or something. I tell niggas to shut up in the crowd, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't pick somebody to to do it on. If somebody doing he really disturbing the show, I'm gonna tell him. If he act like he wants to smoke and I don't want no smoke, I'm gonna tell him that, bro. I don't want no smoke. If I feel like I want smoke, bro, you want it now? This is what it is. Yeah, I just don't get how like you come to a comedy show and then get like offended. Like I, like I just don't like. I feel like, well, it's two things. Like, well, one, like I said, I don't get how you come to a comedy show and then sit there and get offended off of somebody telling jokes. You know, like you either say it back or like shut up. You know what I'm saying? Like a heckler. Like I, like that's that's really wild to me. You know, like you get there and then you want to dispute somebody. But even to the fact that like you know, like I said, uh, I think it was Amy Schumer and somebody else. I was talking about uh I don't know if I feel safe on my job if somebody was to run on stage. If I see if I'm a comedy show and somebody walk up on stage, it's only one or two things they would be walking up on stage at a comedy show for. Like I my guard would be alert, you know. But mm-hmm. again, somebody walking up on a war stage should not affect any comedian like it should for comedy. So I did but I feel like they just using this as a the way, like I they said, just a, she's just a scary bitch, man. <laughs> like I said, if you walk into prison, my nigga, and you ready for the smoke, mm-hmm. you gonna act like that. If you don't want mm-hmm. the smoke, you gonna go into the cell and chill out and wait till they call you to go eat, and then you ain't gonna be coming out. If you like fuck that shit, I don't care. <laughs> nigga, I beat my ass, and you cool with getting your ass beat. It's gonna show, and niggas, you just, you know what I'm saying? That's just all it is. That bitch just like, scared. Now, do you about to fuck with that hoe, man? She don't even be offending nobody. I'm how sorry, you, y'all. How do you feel like? No, no, you good. How do you feel like uh, the importance of social media is right now? Because I know I see a lot. I, I follow a few comedians. Like I can't think of the dude's name right now, but I know he won like uh, America's Got Talent or something like that. One of the comedians, and like he posts every day on uh, like on social media. He do like little jokes and stuff with his mom. Like, how do you feel like the social media presence is affecting like the comedy? Because you know what I'm saying. You got to be on stage doing comedy, then you got to be at home. You know what I'm saying, doing comedy too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's definitely a job, especially for a cat my age. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got time to sit down and do that. I got other shit to do. I got fold clothes and shit, nigga. I got to try to fit the gym in. You know what I'm saying? I got to do, I got a little grandbaby that just left. All that kind of shit right there. So for me, I got to schedule it. But some of them people, they get help. You know, a lot of them niggas lean on them girls. You know what I'm saying? A little baby mama crib. They ain't got shit to do but sit up in there and do that all day. If they booming, then that's, they probably took it on as a job then. If they, if they got like a blue check or something like that. Or if they got big numbers and they're getting some type of money from it. But uh, I think you, you, you definitely got to have a social media presence. I don't, I'm not for sure about if you got to do it every day or nothing like that, though. 
Yeah, because people are definitely gonna be because that's the first thing they're gonna say, like, hey man, what can I find you at? Like, hey, you got Instagram, hey, you on Facebook, or you got TikTok or whatever's mm -hmm. going on. You know, people are always gonna ask that. My other question is, like I said, like uh just talking about your style and how you because I didn't see the show, but just like hearing from you, like you said, you went from like like you and your boys, y'all had y'all click, you was a joker. How did you feel like like how did you cross that over into you know just comedy? Cause like like because I feel like when you joke with your boys, you joking at school, y'all can say some stuff that you be like, damn, I wish somebody heard this. This is the funniest shit I sure. ever get out of my mouth. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know where For this sure. came from. You know what I'm saying? Like, so how how do you feel like it was crossing that over into comedy? Because like, because like I said, those are punchlines that you can't never get back. You can't pull them back from y'all, you know, in the hood and neighborhood. Well, like I say, I like to get the crowd involved. So when I'm talking to the crowd, I automatically turn them into my friends. I go out there, cause that's what I learned from what the show, the dude I was telling you about, going out there and building a, a, a straight rapport real quick. Uh, like if I know I'm at a bar, it's a honky talk bar, then I, I gotta, uh, I don't change who I am, like start talking white or nothing like that. But okay, I'd be like, okay, boom. What if I'm just here and we all was roommates? How would I act around these motherfuckers, right? So I say, okay, boom, I, I, I know how to, make them start trusting this what you got kind of get to get them to kind of like you right off the rip one time i was at a bar it was all white people i'm the only black person in that motherfucker and two dudes that was with me okay first thing i came out when they introduced me the first thing i said was all right what's up how y'all doing i'm being me what's up what's happening y'all make some noise how y'all doing and then they just looking i said all right then hold on i got y'all uh uh howdy yeehaw yeah, you know, I'm doing all that old shit, right? They busting out laughing. I said, all right, then we play cousins now. What's happening? What y'all doing? Then they, they relax. So I say, okay, I see these people just looking at me because probably it's a, you know, they ain't used to seeing this type of comedy or how I'm coming on my delivery. So I just immediately, what's happening, man? What you doing? This your wife? And it start conversating, make a joke about it, see how safe it is. Some people get mad. You got to kind of understand that you know if somebody get mad you got to eat that you can't be bullying them and thinking because you got the mic you can yell over them unless they being malicious if you hurt somebody's feelings and they talking back to you you got to eat it my bad baby i'm sorry baby send a drink over there bartender we're gonna get this straight y'all still good we, we still rolling yeah okay baby anyway what's your name da 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 da, da. now she relaxed i'm the candy for something y'all get up a candy man y'all give it up they could have went away y'all know how our sisters are she over there with no edges too, you know what I'm saying? And then she, they, her little friends, they laugh. Yeah, you don't got no edges, girl. You know what I'm saying? Everybody good. But if you out there trying to be malicious, somebody gonna jump up there and try to cuss you out. I'll be waiting on your ass. You know what I'm saying? So the other question is, uh, what do you feel like is? I guess not just your most memorable, but just like a place that you feel like it touched you the most. I love this is where I love comedy. Man, well, I like to. I like. Well, the first time I said, man, damn, it's over with, was the first time I did Zanies. You know what I'm saying? It was a real big impact. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I was new. Everybody, was, all the comics was wanting to know if I was going to do a set or I was just going to freestyle. I did it. You know, it just blew up. It was just big, man. And I was like, damn, it made me feel like the champion. Like, nigga, I'm, a, I'm the dude now. That's what they were saying on the podcast. Uh, that one dude, I forget his damn name, man. Some famous ass nigga. I seen it on there. They mentioned me about it, you know. And uh, I was like, damn, that was dope. Because I felt I felt that the whole city, you know, I'm from that side of town. It was just crazy, man. Everything, just the stars lined up. It was that day. But my, but I feel the most com comfortable in, in, like, not bars. Bars got, you know, people talking when they're at the bar trying to drink. But I like lounges. Mostly, gotcha. you know, or theaters, gotcha. or, or theaters. Yeah. Have you ever did like? Cause you, for some reason, it seemed like every time you see comics on TV and stuff, it seemed like they start off in a strip club or something like that. Have you ever had to do like a strip club or some crazy? Or what's the craziest yeah. place you feel like you ever had to do like a, a a kid's birthday or something like that or something wild? Yeah, I did a strip club one time. Uh, it was cool. They were throwing money up there like we were strippers. You know, if the joke hit hard, motherfucker would go up and throw money up there and shit. Uh, <laughs> that was crazy though. But the 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 
the wildest one, the one that uh, there was the most the trip though that I could put on the books was a funeral. My homeboy, one of my best friends, man, one of my home dogs, they wanted me to speak. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, I wasn't gonna just. I had to do it like I do it because I asked his mom. I said, "Hey, you know how you want me to do it?" She said, "Just be, just say it like he would want you know, like y'all in the car because that's what we used to do: ride, joke on each other, and shit like that." And um, man, I got so many stories, so I just went up there. I had a flag because he drank and shit. <laughs> And went up there, did some shit that he be doing, and she everybody laughed, and I scolded on, I joked on him a little bit, you know, about what he had on in the casket, this, this, and, and uh, everybody was just tripping, man, and uh, <laughs> it, it was just a trip. And then so you know, uh, everybody was like, "Yo, that was good, that was good. I thought you was gonna do something too far or whatever." And I was like, "Man, was that cool? Was that cool?" They're like, "Yeah, man, it was cool." And I really could have went way over for real, but he was dead, man. I wasn't going to get him like that, but I got his ass, you know what I'm saying? And he would have wanted me to do that. It, it, that's, it felt good. Everybody felt good about it. It was cool, though. But that's the that's the strangest one I did right there, funeral. Any wild, like, crowd or anything, body did anything wild like your shows? Like, wow, what you mean? Like, like, you like, mean, like, a, like, like somebody, like, up? or shooting or somebody, like, uh, like I know you said a heckler or anything, anybody like some niggas got to fighting or anything like any like wild fans shit happened in any of your shows yet? No, I know ain't nobody ran up on stage. Had a, and couple, like, had a couple open mics in hell though. Mm. He, oh, okay, you ever got to fight with any comics or anything? No, I ain't never got to fight with no comics. Oh, okay, do you see yourself doing like the uh, country Wayne? <clears throat> Country Wayne thing with like the skits or anything, kind of expanding, kind of stepping out like different avenues of uh, that. Because like I know Josh said earlier with the whole social media thing, you know, you got to branch out as many possible ways or maybe doing like a web series or anything just to kind of show all all different type of lanes of uh, your talents. So you ain't do no research on me. You ain't, you ain't been on my page. I've I seen. Got four, I've seen. I got four no, I've seen your page, but I'm saying like you know, like he'll have. I've seen your page and the posts and stuff. I got, vi I got videos of the shit on there. I throw that shit on there just to keep shit running because I can't. Yeah, no, I, I know you'll put them yeah. up there. You put them up there, but I mean, like you know, like he have like his whole like series. Like I mean, like it's been going on for like a long, long time. Like I ain't mean like yeah. that much. I mean like you know, like an actual, actual series. You know, like those be like clips and clips, and like, I've seen like the posts that you put up on there. But I ain't yeah, know if yeah, you yeah. like the actual route, like Country Wayne be like, you know, when he used to be like, uh, what is it, uh, Tay, whatever the one when he used to wear like the little outfits and stuff, like uh, Country Tay or whatever his friend was, like yeah, uh, drip, yeah, uh, drip and all them, yeah, like or when he was yeah. like when you dating a, um an older woman and all them type. I didn't, I was wondering if you were going that uh, route any kind soon, like just well, to kind of create characters. Well, what, what, I, I dabbled in some, man. I dabbled in some. I got a little character named Pay Pay. Coach Grimes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sergio, and this other little dude I be doing, uh, 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 named Rodney. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I did, I dab in it, but Country Wayne really, that's his whole thing when he started with. Then he went to comedy. I want to do straight comedy. I want to mm -hmm. do all that shit, but man, I just really want to hit them stages and do them tours. That's really what I meant. Then kind of. If I don't go into movies, I jump into this shit seriously like that because then I be I should be financially able to do this like super full time versus ju ju uh, juggling it with my with my real job and my life and all that shit. Yeah. I, I ain't ready to step out there to make it my full time life right there. I ain't got that enough enough faith yet. What's the hardest form of comedy you feel like for you? The standing still, telling the long ass story and getting your jokes to hit every 20 seconds or 30 seconds half a minute shit like that to do it like i don't i don't know nobody i don't want to use race but white people mostly do it the, that the most like that you know like a sign field i try all this shit out because i'm a student to the game like man for real bringing it back to the sports 
my nigga. You know how them quarterbacks, nigga, they they in there all night and shit. They they, they wives tell them, come on, honey, go to sleep. Or, you know, the nigga, the first one at the gym, all that type of shit. That's me, bro. I studied it. I, I, I knew what I had for me. You know what I'm saying? I came in the game so fast. You know how they say, man, uh, you come in the game so fast, you don't really get all your nutrients that you need. You know what I'm saying? But the dynamic for me is that I'm an older person coming into the game now, my coming so fast for me. If I was a young dude, it probably have a different process than how I'm doing it now. Because I'm doing this shit for, like once I seen that this shit went slowing down, it, my shit is going like this right here, right? And it ain't it ain't took a slide or nothing. So my once I seen a lot of milestones happen, I say to myself, man, if I do this, man, I'm gonna be killing this shit. I I achieve it. I went to Atlanta for the first time watching that shit on, on TV, thinking to myself, damn, man, if I could just go to Atlanta Uptown Club, man, that'd be, I know I'm ready. If I could, if I could do Atlanta, I'm killing down this motherfucker. If I could do Atlanta, man, that's like a motherfucker say, if I go to New York and they fuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> I said, if I do Atlanta, I said, man, it'd be, I, I, I'm telling my girl, I'm like, man, it'd be fine if I go down to Atlanta do, and just get on that stage. I don't care what happened. I get on that motherfucker, they holding a contest, right? 12 o'clock in the morning. I'm tired as hell. I ain't, you know, I ain't never been on no show that late before. I get, I said, fuck it, man. I, I take a nap. I get up. I go down that motherfucker. I shake that hoe. I won that bitch, bro. First time in Atlanta. They were like, where you from? Like Nashville. They were like, what? They were like, we ain't had nobody from Tennessee funny in a long time. Seen Nav Green. Uh, Desi Banks was down there. You know what I'm saying? I stopped uh, fucking around. They were like, yo, man, you, you know, they ain't, they don't be hollering at me or nothing. But, you know what I'm saying? For, for my first time, getting out of the state, doing something. So they gave me so much confidence. Then when I did Zane, I said, man, damn, I want to do Zanis. Josh hit me up out the blue, did Zanis, and did a super duper job on there. And then, I mean, just, everything just kept going. I said, man, if I can make this amount of money, then I made that. I said, boy, it'd be tight if I tighten up, do this, get my shit together, make this money. Then I did that. Now I'm, make, I'm making the money now that about, about six Seven months ago, I said, I wish I was making this, man. Yeah, It'll make it work to me. Now, I, I, when I ask for it, I get it. You see what I'm saying? So now yeah. in my mind, I'm like, I'm finna knock it up again. Because I know I'm going to get it. Because so it, that's what's been happening. Like, watching watching all the people that where you at, like, at Zanies and shit like that now, if you had to tell somebody, like, hey, this somebody that y'all need to watch out for, besides yourself, who would you say mm -hmm. it is? Who I'll say it is, who you need to watch out for. Like this motherfucker gonna that's be been the Zanies, or I need yeah. to tell Zanies like like a another another comic that's there that you'll be like this that's motherfucker funny as fuck. Really, man, and not 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 to be sound cliche and shit though. Probably Josh because I think that me and Josh in the lane in community we are in, Josh got the corporate and I got the streets and we real high in the game right now. You know what I'm saying? And you know, right now the the streets are saying one of us finna do something. You know what I'm saying? Something to happen for one of us. And I fuck with Josh for what he did for me that one time. So I'm gonna bring him, and I'm sure he's gonna bring me because he keep yeah, fucking with me on this thing and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's not even like we racing enough because he he a whole nother kind of genre than I am. You know what I mean? But 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 the fame we gaining is like this. Josh might got a little bit more than me because, I, like I say, he in the corporate, but I'm real deep with the when it comes to all the street stuff. Not trying to claim the streets or nothing like that, but I'm just saying when it comes to the hood and all the urban and and all that shit right there, I think I got that shit on lock right now. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna say Josh. It's a mo it's a mo man, but I, I'm just trying to be careful. But Josh definitely would be one. So who? Uh, so the other question I got, like, just just think about like a joker. When you think about a a, a person that joke, Flash like, Flood, he's definitely one to be watching out for. Flash right. Flood, let me say his name. Yeah, so thinking about a joker, like, who do you feel like? I wish I was in the room. Like, I know I'm funnier than that motherfucker. Like somebody that might be out there now, you'd be like, God damn, I know I'm funnier than him. Like, I wish I just had the opportunity to be in there, and you know what I'm saying, just to go against them. Michael Blackson. I fry his ass. <laughs> he say good shit, but he got the accent that he used to crutch on yes. what he do, and that's cool. That's cool. You know, he can mother sucker me to death, but 
man. And I'm not going to use black jokes on him. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what they're going to be looking for. I'm going to use ugly jokes on him. Yeah. And hair <laughs> jokes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Nah, but I think I would like to go against Mike. I think I can get him. But uh, it's a lot of dudes that can joke, boy. It is. And, uh, this nigga named K-Dub. Y'all, y'all ever heard of him? Mm-hmm. They do. And the guy I mentioned earlier in my city, Sebo, man, that motherfucker, man. So now he, where you at now, you don't you don't feel like you could still touch him or you feel like he's still to Sebo? Yeah. Yeah. I think I could do anybody. Only thing I'm only thing I think my blessing is waiting on is for me to tighten my skill up to get sharper. You know what I'm saying? Just to 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 uh one of the things I'm finna do right now to sharpen myself to prepare for Anything to happen for me that comes my way is I'm gonna make sure I got me a solid 45 minutes that I can read to myself and say it word for word because that's what real comics got. Yeah, I just take all my stuff and then I make notes before I go and say, I'm gonna say this, say this, say this, say this. You see what I'm saying? And I then I do the act, but to but I want to be soon. Somebody say, Yo, I'm gonna bump you up a position, I, I want to be ready. You see what I'm saying? I can yeah. feature all day long. And I'm, when I say feature, I mean with a big comic. But if Mike Epps come, I can do a feature spot. I can, I definitely do an open spot, but I can do a feature spot. You see what I'm saying? But if they want me to replace Mike Epps, I have to be ready. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, you know, no. and that's, that's the thing. Like, yeah. I was like, like, you said, like, that's that's an art in itself because I know I do social media, I do videos, I do TikTok, I do stuff like that, and you just memorize it, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times my funniest videos is me freestyling, like me joking. Like you said, like I can say some funny shit that's going to you know, gonna be relevant to everything that's going on. I might throw like something in that's from the street, or oh, I'm from out south, or you know what I'm saying? Something that's mm-hmm. going to be people that's around you, but you know, like that's the thing, that like, you got to like tweak shit. And so, like, it's just crazy that he memorized the the whole thing. I'm talking about just the way his mannerisms is, the like mm-hmm. exactly like what he's doing when he take a drink. Like, I was like, damn, he doing the same. It's like it's like watching, you know, what I'm saying watching a movie. He doing the same. Like when he smoke his cigarette, the way he smoke his cigarette, and then he blow it out right when and he the, hit and the, the timing, the timing when he smoke it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All this shit. It's all the same. So I'm just like, you know, that's that's a that's a talent that people won't even you won't even know unless you really paying attention and like you said if you if you in some kind of comedy or funny world you actually looking at it like you said you looking at that like your jordan or you're you looking at tapes and i'm watching motherfuckers like damn you know what i'm saying like if i'm seeing like a king batch he like the biggest person when social media he got uh three three hundred you know what I'm saying million some followers i'm like okay so what's so funny like what is he doing that's changing so then you can put it into your own realm you know like you get some shit like i i don't like that but i'm gonna I'm take something out of it that's gonna perfect me you know what i'm saying and then oh i'm gonna tweak this and change this overdo this but like that's what i'm saying you just studying and seeing that and you just like damn that that's that's a talent see with that that is a skill because uh they call that giving the audience time to laugh like you can cut the laugh off too fast too that's something i didn't know i didn't see you you're gonna fuck up a lot doing this shit with anything you're doing bro you feel what i'm saying that you just supernatural talented but when it comes to doing this shit professionally which i call it professionally when you really doing this shit with structure some real funny and then you start talking people stop because you just you back talking yeah. But they really want to really get that laugh in. You know, when you start laughing like real hard, you be like, ooh, 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 man, oh, man, oh, man. Let them get all that in, man. You know, and Dave mastered that. He'll, he'll hit you, people be laughing, and then he just let y'all, he let you soak into the laugh. Then he come with it, so something else. Sometimes you can say the shit so fast, you cut your laughs off, you, you cheating yourself in the crowd. And who is, uh, some you know bucket list people you want to tour or headline for or open i mean sorry open up for you know hopefully if you, you know just throw it out there get them off you know like hey, everybody put into, the, put into the universe like give me your top five see okay carlos mill okay he'll be down there actually uh 20 next well a couple weeks i can fuck with this shit they doing um mike Epps. I don't know if I'm ready for Dave and them yet. I ain't gonna even put them big ones out there like it though, man. You know what I'm saying? 
Cause that nigga that's earthquake. Super Bowl, that's Super Bowl level for me right there. Earthquake was funny as fuck too. Like that's a different kind of that's a different kind of stand up. Yeah, I I want to do yeah all, all of them all of them all, like okay Kevin Hart and um, Dave Chappelle them type of cats big like that and Cat Williams I put them up there like that too but some kind of way I just feel that my comedy his comedy could work together you know he can mm -hmm. formulate for the show you can't mix two a lot of different type of comics on a show unless unless are uh, they super big you know what I'm saying. You know, nah, you, you, would, you you would put Earthquake on there with uh Joe Rogan. No, yeah, I understand. It makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but uh, uh, oh, go ahead, keep going. Oh, so so I, I'm gonna say Mike Epps, Cat Williams. Uh, um, um, you said Carlos Miller. Carlos Miller, and what's the the big dude? Uh, Lavelle Crawford. Lavelle Crawford. Hilarious. Uh, yeah. Was about to say, um, you have any opening uh, dates coming up? Man, I'll be in Zanies on the 20th of this month. For the, are you doing the, the roast battle? The roast with battle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for some people, uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, let's see. I'll be in Atlanta uh, the beginning, the beginning of next month. And I'm doing Memorial Day down at Hadley Park. Okay. And uh, before we go, just let everybody know, like, just get a quick spill. Of, you know, let everybody know who the fuck, you know, comedian Mike Drew is. Just the basis of who you are, who, what type of motherfucker they get when they see, you know, just give them one more quick spill of who you are and then tell everybody how they can find you and what's coming in store for them in 2022. All right. First off, I'm just a comedian, humble guy, uh, 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 coming through the game hard. You know what I'm saying? Focus and ready. You know what I'm saying? Hilarious. I love that word. That's what best describes me. Hilarious. A lot of comics are funny, but we shooting for hilarious. You understand? We don't just put up five or ten. We try to put up sixty every time. Even if we do put up five or ten, the goal is to put up sixty. So that's what you're getting every time I'm on that stage. Is one hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? You're getting some good urban comedy. You know what I mean? We touching on everything. I'm touching on everything from family to uh, uh, the struggle to life. You know what I'm saying? I don't do religion too much, though. But we talking about them bad-ass kids y'all want to get rid of and that hateful-ass job you're trying to get away from and that raggedy cop, all that life stuff, the struggle. You know what I mean? Call me the Tupac of Copper. You feel me? Spitting on reporters and all. Uh, we appreciate nah, you. No, no, no. Don't put that on me, man. Uh, we ain't putting that in the universe, man. Ain't no uh, hugs. I ain't give no out hugs. Now you got to be hugs bishop, man. Now you got to look. You got to own the bishop, man. You know, the when first time, first time, first time we called you crazy. You know what I'm saying? It pissed you off. But now you might be. You know, you just might not give a fuck. Like, what'd he say? You don't give a fuck about Raheem. You don't give a fuck about him. You don't even give a fuck about what he say. Like I said, you got to own that shit, you know? Like I said, you're going to be Bishop. You got to be Pac. You know what I'm saying? Because you would Jada say, Pac would have went up there and knocked the fuck out of Chris Rock. You know what Jada say? Got Willow, got Willow writing Tupac letters, and he dead talking about come back and say, my mama, because I love you. I never even met you. You know what I'm saying? That's a bad motherfucker right there. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Pac, Pac, Pac. But nah, man, uh, we appreciate it. Josh, go ahead and give everybody uh, uh, your daily announcement. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, yeah, now, nah, so you know, we got I got the skincare going on, uh, you know, skin is still going on. I got the crystals. Uh, I just finally like my LLC came in today, so now I'm officially LLC out uh with all my stuff. But I'm telling everybody right now, if you need something that, that I'm supposed to be making for you, you better get it out now because once May 4 hit, May 4th hit, I'm getting I'm deploying. So uh I got my and then my TikTok, you already know Naji Naji Naji. I'm at I'm at ninety six thousand followers today, so I'm trying to hit this hundred thousand yeah. before I leave. So you know what I'm saying, like that's it. Dog got the LLC for them rental spoons, and if everybody yeah, else still trying to get dog, eight more than ninety two podcast merch, it is still on the Shopify page. I messed it up the last two weeks, so I'm just gonna tell you I hit the link on the bio of the eight more than ninety two eight mt nine two underscore podcast at the Instagram page, and for y'all questions that y'all do submit. The eight more than ninety-two podcast pay uh 
podcast at g there you go podcast at gmail.com make sure you check out the new uh youtube video that we did upload this video will drop i mean this episode will drop on wednesday and the youtube should drop probably by friday saturday and mike now this time you can go ahead and tell everybody where to find you on all the social media platforms go ahead thank you my brother you can find me on facebook uh mike drew m-i-k-e-d-r-e-w um on instagram at mike drew 220 same thing for TikTok. that's all i'm using right now is just those right there okay and, uh, and this has been another episode of the eight oh, no, I'm, on, I'm sorry i'm sorry i'm on uh damn i'm on youtube also it's mike drew too funny number oh. two f-u-n-n-y just like everybody gonna see in this video when we drop it on friday saturday it's the same name as he got for uh in his uh name for the thing so mike comedian mike drew too funny with the number two not two so this has been another episode of the eight morning 92 podcast where we always keep 100 we're gonna holler at y'all later peace back in this bitch uh no we full attack in this shit uh you know the full mac came equipped uh, so promise you